intelligencesquared.com. Thank you very much, Edward. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for being here. We've had a very lively debate with lots of wide-ranging talks on all sorts of subjects which, to my mind, bore very little relation to the actual motion. So we had a lovely description of Stoke and the potteries there and the lovely <laughs> ceramics, um, which I'm sure everyone appreciates. Um, we had a delightful um, description of the rupee note, which I've seen, and uh, I hadn't realized that there were 17 languages, and that's some additional piece of uh, information which I'm sure um, I will treasure. Um, it's a very educative experience, speaking of these debates. We've heard about the IMF, we've heard about uh, the World Bank and global capitalism and other such things, and we've also learnt about slave rebellions, and I did not know that the uh, Aborigine for goodbye was warra warra. Um, I've learnt that too, so that was particularly educative. But what I would like to um, focus the uh, attention of uh, you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is on the actual motion, is on actually addressing the question, should Britain's former colonies stop blaming the empire uh, for their ills? And clearly the case uh, in the last 30, 40 years of international history shows that the very nature of imperialism itself, the British imperialism, led to difficulties, led to structural imbalances, if you like, which have massive repercussions today and deeply affect the world that we live in. That doesn't mean to say that these countries would have been lands of milk and honey if there hadn't been an empire, but it does mean that some of the problems that we face today as a global community and some of the specific problems that are faced uh, by countries, by places like Kashmir, by Nigeria, by Sudan uh, and other places, for instance in Iraq and uh, among others, have a direct uh, cause, a, directly, uh, a re direct result of the British imperial experience. And it's not good to say, it's not good enough to say that because Saddam Hussein uh, blamed the British Empire, that that means the British Empire was a good thing. Because just because someone says, uh, makes an argument, it doesn't discredit that argument. Saddam Hussein actually nationalized Iraqi oil. And it was as a consequence of our involvement, uh, British involvement in the 1920s, um, that he had to do that. And so the story of uh, oil in Iraq, which I've written about in my book, is central to the uh, difficulties and the, the wars, if you like, that we fought there recently. So that's a clear example in which the British imperial experience had a direct uh, consequence uh, today. Uh, we all also witnessed this year the birth of the Southern Sudan, the Republic of Southern Sudan. Now that country was engaged in pretty much a 55-year civil war against the North in order to establish its independence. Now, why did that happen? Why did they feel that they had to fight for their own independence uh, within Sudan and actually break away from that country? Well, that was a direct consequence of British imperial policy in the 1930s, the so-called th Southern policy, which meant that the two uh, parts of Sudan, the North and South, were split and run very differently, only for that policy to be reversed in 1946 and for the two parts to be yoked together uh, in a very uh, unstable uh, union. Uh, and the consequences of that have been a 55-year civil war on and off. Um, I mean, 55 years continuous fighting is a very long time, so they, they did take a breather, actually, um, I think, between 1973 and 1982. But, the, but flippancy aside, this was a serious conflict which had direct uh, uh, roots in the British imperial experience. So anyone who reads the papers, the newspapers today, anyone who's uh, traveled around in former colonies will know uh, and have direct experience of the legacies of British imperial rule. Now, we, I suppose uh, within the motion, we can come to the notion of blame. And uh, one, um, one speaker uh, whose offering I enjoyed very much suggested that, um, they, of course, they've stopped blaming Britain because they blame America. Um, and so they've sort of forgotten about the British imperial uh, experience and now have a new enemy, a new target. Uh, that's pretty much, uh, in, in many ways, it's true. But they are also mindful, even though they know that America is very powerful, 
They are also mindful of their own history. And even if um, a large number of Indians under the age of 25 haven't heard of Mahatma Gandhi, um, I can assure um, I speak here that a lot of people in Africa have heard of Winston Churchill. They have heard of um, the governors that uh, ruled in many ways uh, th those countries. And the British imperial experience is very much uh, part, of, uh, part of life. People are very aware of, of uh, the British imperial legacy. And in, and in many ways, they blame the British. I mean, one need only look at Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria itself, the word Nigeria, was made up. It was made up by a woman uh, called Flora Shaw. And you can actually identify the very date on which it was created in April 1897. It appeared in, the, uh, in an op-ed op piece, an editorial piece of the Times. This was an entirely artificial construct of something like 250 different tribes banded in three broad, broadly different regions. Now, people remember the Biafran War. Um, there's been a lot of literature about it. There's an excellent book called Half a Yellow Sun, um, which uh, recounts the experiences of the war. But that war was very uh, fresh in people's minds. And surprisingly, perhaps to some people in the audience, people blame the British uh, for, for that, because Nigeria should never, in, in many ways, have been one united country. And as a consequence of that colonial experience, there are um, repercussions today. There isn't, a serious, there isn't a strong sense of the state because people have different uh, tribal or familial uh, ties. Um, they, have, they don't have a particularly strong sense of um, the probity of public officials because the state is weak and people feel that corruption or state employment and gaining uh, money through state employment is a legitimate means uh, to proceed. That's a direct consequence of the creation of this artificial country. So there are, there are lots of examples in the world today. People here are very familiar um, with, with global politics, I'm sure. And obviously, um, it is the case that British imperial, uh, the British imperial past, the colonial adventure, if you like, um, directly caused a, a lot of these structural problems, directly fueled, if you like, a lot of the ethnic hatreds and animosities um, which uh, divide these countries. And lastly, I would look at Kashmir. Uh, Kashmir is probably the country, or the tract of land, which is most likely to lead to nuclear war. I'm not saying nuclear war is going to happen, but if, if it does happen, the most likely place where it will break out is over Kashmir. Now, Kashmir, the situation in Kashmir, was a direct consequence of a British policy, uh, not only to sell Kashmir to a Hindu Maharaja, which took place in 1846, but also, 100 years later, it was decided that the Maharaja would have sole discretion, if you like, his sole judgment uh, would be relied on to decide which country uh, Kashmir would accede to, whether it would be Pakistan or India. And the Hindu Maharaja, in a population which was overwhelmingly Muslim, 80% Muslim, decided, uh, well, he, actually, he wanted to be independent. And when he was told that that wasn't uh, an option, he, he sulked for about three days and then decided to go with India. But that had huge repercussions uh, for, for t today's uh, political arena. And do people in Kashmir blame Britain? Of course they do. They blame Britain for the fact that this Maharaja had sole discretion and was a Hindu in a predominantly uh, Muslim country. They blame Britain and the UN for the fact that no plebiscite uh, was ever held. So they could never actually determine um, which country their destiny should lie with. And so all around the world today, we have direct consequences of uh, British imperial uh, malfeasance, miscalculation, uh, if you like. And it's a consequence of those uh, miscalculations that, that, that colonies should, I think, continue uh, to blame some of their ills, at least, on the legacy of British imperialism. Thank you.